Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. Blender 3.0 official release has just landed and it's packed with a lot of new features. In this video, we'll focus on animation and rigging updates. Let's get started. Custom bone shapes can now be rotated, translated or scaled. This is a great new feature as it facilitates the guesswork to align your custom shape with the bone. Also, it will allow us to use the same custom shape on different bones and adjust its position, rotation and scale afterward. Positioning the custom shape in the bone local space is still a little tricky. A great feature will be to be able to enter some kind of edit shape mode where we can transform the bone shape using Blender manipulators. We can now change the axis position along a bone, choosing whether to position it toward the head or the tip of the bone. P bones have also received some nice improvements. The curve in and curve out options are now named with the proper local bone axis, meaning that the input to curve the B bone along its local Z axis is no longer using an input called Y axis, but Z axis. The scale in and out option now feature the Y axis, allowing uneven scaling along the bone length. A huge time saver has also been added. In Blender 2.9, in order to be able to manipulate the scale in or out of a B bone using its children or any handle bone, we had to create a driver. Now, as soon as you have a handle bone, whether it's a child or a custom bone, you can directly use its scaling to drive the scale out or in of your B bone by enabling the corresponding channel. Blender will automatically map the X, Y or Z channel directly onto the B bone. This will tremendously increase your rigging speed whenever you are using B bones. Finally, the Ease option will allow you to map the Y scaling of the handle bone to drive the scale out of the B bone. This way you will be able to manipulate your B bone exactly as you will do with a curve. Those little inputs save you the creation of six to eight drivers per bone. Let's have a look to bone constraints. The green bone has different constraints from this target bone. In previous version of Blender, if I wanted to copy one of the constraints onto the other bone, I had to go to Pose, Constraint, Copy Constraint to Selected Bones. But I could then choose whether to copy all the constraints or only some of the constraints. If I only wanted the Copy Location constraint, I now have to go through all the bones and remove the undesired constraints. I will clear all the constraints pressing Ctrl Alt C and now with those two bones selected, I will make the third one active and now each constraint features in its drop-down menu a copy to selected option that will allow us to transfer the current constraint to the selected bones. This new feature will be a huge time saver. You will also find an apply option that will allow you to remove the constraint but keep the bone in its current pose. If I just clear the constraint, we can see the bone getting back to its original position. Why, if I choose the apply option, it does clear the constraint but the bone will keep his visual position. We have the same behavior as if we have applied the visual transform to our bone prior to remove the constraint. Be very cautious because it won't key the current transform, even if auto keying is enabled. There are tons of new mix modes for the different transform constraints and to be perfectly honest, I have a very hard time understanding everything but I think I figured out the local space owner orientation behavior. I've built this little setup to help explaining it. We have two chains of bones and each top bone is parented to the lower bone. The arrows object are just here to showcase you the local axis of those bones. I will add 
a copy rotation constraint to the smaller bone. By default, the constraint is set from world space to world space. So the owner of the constraint will follow the target. We often use the combination of local space to local space for tails or fingers. Whatever rotation the target will have, the owner will follow in its own local space. If I rotate the target around its z-axis, the owner will rotate also around its local z-axis. And it will work the same with all the axes. So let's try now switching the target option to local space with owner orientation. If I now rotate the target around its x-axis, the owner of the constraint will behave as usual. It will rotate around its x-axis too. If I now rotate around the target z local axis, the constraint bone or the owner is now rotating around its y axis. What's happening here is that the target bone, the one constraining the other, is defining the pivot orientation of the constraint owner. So it's pretty confusing whenever the bones are aligned, but now if I enter edit mode, and I change the base orientation of the target bone. If I now perform a rotation around its y-axis, you can see the constraint bone following the same visual axis for its own rotation. If I duplicate our orientation object and move it to the root of the constraint bone, we can clearly see that the constraint bone follows those axes. This behavior is calculated before we move any of the parent. So changing any of the parent orientation won't change the way the constraint bone rotates in its own local space. So I think it can have a lot of great application, especially for mechanical design. There was a little revision of the stretch to constraint that now has its default rotation set to swing. To be honest, I haven't spotted this option before, but it allows the stretch to constraint on top of its stretching to behave like the damped track constraint. So we no longer need to add a dumped track constraint prior to a stretch to constraint. With the previous setup, whenever I'm disabling the dumped track constraint, you can see a slight glitch in the twisting of the arm. But this is a feature that was introduced to Blender 2.82. But by default, the rotation was set to XZ instead of swing. While now on Blender 3, whenever you are adding a stretch to constraint, it is by default set to swing, and you no longer need any damped track constraint. In the graph editor, we can now select any curve by box selecting the curve. If you box select keys, the keys will be selected. So basically, box selecting the curve is like double clicking the transform channel. The restrict frame range option for curve modifiers is now inclusive. Top in previous version of Blender, whenever you were restricting a modifier like the noise modifier, the starting and ending restricted frames were not affected by the noise modifier or any modifier used, which is no longer the case with Blender 3. In previous version of Blender, if you want to create a camera shake, for example, that will start on frame 15, you will have to set the restrict frame range on frame 14. This trick is no longer needed. Top, a new king set has been added, allowing you to key lock rot scale and custom properties, which will behave as whole character, but the whole character keying set only work in pose mode, while this new keying set works in object mode too. So if you have an object with custom properties and you press I, both its transform channels and custom properties will be keyed, while if I switch to whole character, nothing will happen. Top and an error message will appear in my 3D viewport. So this option is designed to be able to animate props or objects as well as rigged character at the same time. 
but there is one main issue with this king set. If you use this king set on an armature in pose mode, it will override the only insert available option in the preferences. So basically, it will ruin whatever king set you've done on your character rig. If I switch to this king set on my character, and if I select a bone that only has its location keyed, for example, I generally do this whenever I don't need the other's channels. This controller rotation is not used, so I won't be keying it to keep my dope sheet and my graph editor clean. But if I now press I in the 3D viewport or move my character with the auto cane on, it will key all the channels of this controller. So basically, it will ruin my king set. While if I switch to whole character and I insert a keyframe, my whole character controllers will be keyed, but only the already keyed transform channels or properties will write a new keyframe keeping my dope sheet and my graph editor clean. If you want to learn character creation, rigging and animation and take your skill to a professional level, you will find extensive and top-rated Blender courses on p2design.com. Hundreds of professionally edited videos shipped with all the models, rig and Blender files. Use the code P2Design to get 10% off on any of the courses. One of the most anticipated features of Blender 3 is the pause library that is part of the asset management tools. I will record an in-depth tutorial later on. For the time being, let's have a quick look to it. For the time being, it is shipped as an add-on. So you have to search for pause in your add-on and activate the animation pause library. As you do, a new tab will appear in your properties panel. From there, you can start posing your character. In my case, I will load one of the actions I've created for the Alive course. By the way, the course is compatible with Blender 3. And if I now go into my animation panel and hover over the Create Pose button, it says that it will create a pose in the pose library for the selected bones. So the first thing I will do is select all my boats and then I will click the Create Pose Asset button. Thumbnail has been created, we'll talk about this a little later. And a contextual menu has appeared in the bottom left corner where I can enter a name for the current pose. If I check the Activate New Action, it will open me the action where this pose is stored. I will repeat the process with the Jab Pose so first of all, make sure that the bones you want to record are selected. Then click the button Create Pose Asset and name it. If we now both our action editor, we will see those two newly created action with the Asset Manager icon in front. And basically, those are simple action with only one pose in them. That's already a big improvement that we can source an animation to add any of its pose to the pose library. Now to enjoy this new tool, I have split my 3D view and I will open the asset browser. From there, I can select one of the stored poses and apply it to my character. Another awesome tool that is also available is the interactive blend. With my jab pose selected, I can left click the interactive blend button and as I move my mouse to the right, it will blend toward the pose library pose, while moving to the left will go toward the current pose. We can easily select the key bone with the select button and we can even flip the selected pose. Note that you need your rig to currently support symmetry. Note that you can apply the pose only to the selected bone. So for example, I can select the bones from my right hand and apply the jab pose where the hand is closed. Also, with the hand bone selected, I can create a new pose for the pose library. And since my character has symmetrical hands, I can use this right hand pose to pose the left hand by simply activating the flip pose. Automatically select the left hand bone with the select button. 
and then click apply to apply the pose. A huge potential to accelerate animation workflows. To improve the preview thumbnails, we simply need a camera. Thumbnails are generated from the camera view. So whenever you are creating a new pose for your pose library, if you don't have a camera, Blender will create a blank thumbnail. But we can easily fix this by adding a camera to our scene, frame our character, and then select the pose in the pose library. And under the preview tab, click the generate preview. Or you can even click the folder icon and load your custom made thumbnails. A visual scale is now available for all the in-betweening tools. This made the use of the breakdowner or pushing tools a little easier, with a better visual representation of the blending. Holding shift will allow you to get a smooth transition, while holding control will allow you to increment every 10%. Can now update all the motion path at once by clicking the update all path button, avoiding you to select the tracked bone and then update its own motion path. A little trick I used on previous version of Blender was to add the update path to my quick favorite so you don't need to select the bone. Basically, the update all offers the same behavior. Finally, I'd like to give a big shout out to my friend Finn. He has updated the Bone Layer Manager, now called Bone Manager, for Blender 3. A must have for any rigger out there. While there are some changes on Blender 3, my rigging course is still up to date, as the workflow and the tools haven't changed that much. This is the end of this video about Blender 3 update. I hope you've enjoyed it and let me know in the comment the new features you'd like me to explain further. Wishing you a good day, I'll see you in the next video.